Hello everyone, Michael Yamani here, back today with one of our most requested videos, interpretation of intra aortic balloon pump waveforms. I know a lot of you have been messaging me to do a more detailed video on this subject, so as promised, I have put together this video that particularly discusses waveforms. Having said that, for any of our new viewers, I highly encourage you to uh, look at the previous balloon pump video prior to watching this so you have a good foundation of the basics of a balloon pump. Now before we go ahead and get started, I'd like to thank all my subscribers for supporting this channel. And if you happen to be new to this channel, consider subscribing because we'll continue to bring you great educational videos that are presented in a simple and concise manner, thereby saving you much needed time. Okay, quick review of uh, uh, intraortic balloon pump. Here we have the balloon itself. So the balloon gets inserted via your femoral artery, gets advanced um, up the uh, descending aorta, and sits um, right below the subclavian artery when it gets to the heart. Now once it gets to the heart, it inflates and deflates, inflates and deflates constantly. So by doing so, it uh, balances the supply and demand of oxygen on the heart. So you know when the heart contracts is when, the, uh, when it requires the most oxygen. Okay? So the, at the heart contracts, there is a high demand of oxygen. Um, so that's when the balloon pump um, uh, deflates. Okay? The heart contracts, balloon pump deflates. By deflating, it creates a little bit of a vacuum, uh, and that little bit of vacuum creates uh, a, a, a most like a suction effect, uh, and try and takes a little bit of blood out of the heart. Okay, when the heart relaxes or during the diastolic phase, is when the balloon pump inflates. Okay, so when the heart relaxes, the balloon pump deflates, uh, just like you see on this picture. Um, it sends out more blood into the heart through the coronary artery phase, uh, supplying the heart with more oxygenation, okay? So the balloon pump improves the supply of oxygen and it decreases the demand of oxygen as the heart contracts there uh, by uh, reducing the afterload, right? So when the heart contracts and the balloon pump deflates, uh, and creates a little bit of a suction, what it's doing is it's uh, minimizing the afterload, okay? Remember what afterload is? It's the uh, pressure against the heart uh, or the pressure the heart has to push against uh, to pump the blood, right? So it, it decreases the afterload by decreasing the demand of oxygen uh, required by the heart. So that's the basics of uh, a balloon pump. Now, uh, before we talk about the waveform, let's look at an arterial pressure waveform. And that I think it's very important to understand the arterial uh, pressure waveform prior because that's where the balloon pump waveform plays into. So we got a, a basic ar uh, arterial pressure waveform here. You got uh, a nice, beautiful spike in pressure during the systolic phase uh, and reading about, what, 115-ish systolic and uh, it kind of plateaus here and your diastolic phase um, starts right after that di diacrotic notch, okay? What creates this diacrotic notch is your um, aortic valve closing, okay? So the heart contracts, you get your nice systolic uh, uh, waveform and then when, once it plateaus and the arterial, I'm sorry, the aortic valve closes, you get a nice diacrotic notch which marks the beginning of the diastolic waveform. So you get a nice beautiful drop with the diastolic. So this is a basic arterial pressure waveform. Now when you have a balloon pump uh, 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 playing into the arterial uh, pressure waveform is right before the diacrotic notch happens or right before the diastolic phase begins, that's when you see another spike in the waveform signifying uh, balloon pump augmentation. And we'll, we'll look at it some more here on this, uh, on this next slide. So you got a nice spike in arterial waveform. So right before the diac you see the diacrotic notch, which would be right below, right here, you see a spike uh, of another pressure or another waveform uh, signifying the balloon pump inflating. Okay, so right, right, right at the diastolic or right before the diastolic, the balloon pump inflates. 
okay um thereby allowing extra blood to pump in through the coronary arteries uh supplying the heart with more oxygen okay and then the balloon pump deflates as the balloon pump deflates right right before the systolic another systolic waveform happens the balloon pump deflates now it's uh reducing that afterload so this systolic waveform following the augmentation is going to be assisted so we got our assisted systolic waveform right here following the uh, augmentation of the balloon pump okay and the cycle happens over and over and over again okay this is a one-to-one -one balloon pump frequency which means every heartbeat is being augmented so every heartbeat right at the diacritic notch every diacritic notch you see the balloon pump inflating okay but let's look at a one to two balloon pump frequency okay now you can clearly see the augmentation versus the non-augmented waveform so during one to two balloon pump every other beat is augmented not every beat but every other beat so let's look at the speed right here we got a nice arterial pre uh, pressure waveform going up and then right before the diacritic notch so just like this one right before the deck if you um if you were to uh, uh draw a line from here a straight line it would be right above the diacritic notch the augmentation happens right before the diastolic phase begins so uh, you get the balloon uh, inflating right before the diastolic waveform and then deflating okay when the heart deflates whatever waveform follows is assisted so this is our assisted um, uh, systolic uh, waveform okay but on the next one the balloon does not deflate so you see a nice diacritic notch followed by a normal unassisted diastolic pressure okay so this is unassisted beat but on the next one you see um so you see the unassisted systole because there's no augmentation here um so unassisted diastole uh comes prior to unassisted systole but then right before the diacritic notch or right before the diastolic phase begins um you see um the balloon uh inflating okay you see a nice augmentation here and then the balloon pump deflates so right after the balloon pump deflates whatever follows is your assisted systolic okay you got assisted systolic but this beat right here when it goes through uh, the diastolic phase the balloon pump does not inflates for this one so you get you get your nice diacritic notch followed by an assisted diastole okay so this is what it looks like uh when it's uh, uh being augmented every other beat your rhythm um, so one to two balloon pump and then you have one to three we usually use them to win the patient off the balloon pump okay so you do you uh, you do your one to two balloon pump frequency see your hemodynamic numbers you see your blood pressure you see your cardiac index and whatnot um, and see if it's trending down or are you stabilizing and if it stabilizes and if the patient is okay then you go on to one to three frequency and you know uh, check the same hemodynamics again but this is what you basically look at uh, when you're looking at the console of the balloon pump okay you have your uh, rhythm you have your heart rate and then the balloon pump waveform which in this case is in one to two mode you see your, every other beat being augmented and then you get your blood pressure so in this case when it's one to two you get two blood pressure okay so the top one being assisted so 98 over 47 and the bottom one you have in this case 101 over 53 being your unassisted uh, uh, blood pressure and then you got your mean um, and then you have your augmentation number augmentation number which is uh, you know your peak augmentation of the balloon pump which is always going to be higher than your systolic number augmentation always going to be higher than systolic number and then you got your helium balloon pump uses uh, a helium so you got how much helium left in the balloon uh, and then you have your battery here so that's that's basically what you look at when you're looking at the console of a balloon pump all right now let's talk about some of the timing errors that we see during a balloon pump waveform so we'll start by uh, looking at early inflation early deflation um, now normally yes the balloon pump is supposed to inflate slightly early 
than uh, uh, the heart uh, relaxing and uh, it's supposed to deflate uh, slightly early than the diastolic phase but in this case uh, what's happening is uh, looking at early inflation for example the balloon is inflating way too early uh, uh, than the um, diacritic notch okay so the heart relaxes that's when the uh, inflation is supposed to happen so uh, diastole inflation right uh, but in this case you can uh, try and draw a straight line uh, so you see how far up the um, augmentation is taking place so this is your diacritic notch and if you if you draw a straight line to the uh, augmentation the augmentation or the balloon inflation is taking place way higher um, up here when in reality it's supposed to be um, augmenting slightly above the diacritic notch which is right around here okay so um, early inflation balloon pump is uh, inflating uh, earlier or much earlier than it needs to be which means the uh, heart is not uh, getting the proper or the needed the much needed oxygen supplies um, as it uh, uh, is in the diastolic phase right as in uh, as it relaxes um, early deflation uh, same thing the heart uh, in this case uh, contracts or the heart is systolic phase and then that's when the balloon deflates but it's happening way earlier than needed okay um, so in this case you'll you'll notice the your unassisted in diastolic pressure almost matching the assisted in diastolic pressure so during early deflation the heart the balloon pump is not really doing much to uh, 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 prevent some of that afterload some of that uh, uh, pressure right uh, that the heart has to pump against it's not doing a whole lot in uh, preventing uh, um, the afterload so early deflation uh, early inflation that's uh, that's how you know uh, um, uh, you, you're having uh, an error okay um, early deflation your unassisted in diastolic matches your uh, in diastolic pressure and uh, early inflation uh, you'll see uh, the uh, diacritic notch uh, happening uh, way way below the actual inflation or the, inf the augmentation happening way before the actual diacritic notch uh, now uh, late inflation and late deflation here uh, um, so looking at late inflation uh, here you have the balloon pump um, inflating uh, after the heart has already been in a diastolic phase okay so you have your systolic phase right here on a systolic phase you got a nice spike right here followed by uh, a diacritic notch so right here the diacritic notch happened before uh, the balloon inflation takes place okay so this is late it's supposed to have happened right before the diacritic notch remember it's supposed to have happened right here somewhere but the balloon inflated after the heart has already uh, uh, went through the diastolic phase so uh, the problem with that is now your assisted systolic is uh, matching your augmentation okay so the balloon is not really doing much aug augmentation itself okay uh, late deflation uh, the balloon is deflating even after the heart has started contracting um, uh, which in this case is really even worse uh, uh, by that I mean it's really adding uh, more afterload so the balloon pump is actually doing more damage than we uh, than helping the heart it's actually doing more damage than helping the heart okay so late deflation the balloon is already uh, um, uh, the balloon is already has not started uh, deflating when the heart started when the heart starts uh, its systolic phase so the heart is contracting okay but the balloon pump is still uh, inflated this has not started deflating yet so the heart is having to fight not just the afterload but it's also having to fight the uh, balloon itself okay so that's doing more harm to our patients here and uh, the, the way you would know is you would have this wide gap between the uh, augmentation and the next diacritic notch okay so that's that's pretty much uh, the basics of uh, uh, balloon pump waveform or really most of what you should know about balloon pump waveform 